Let's we'll start with the obvious. Uh, you've seen Devin have some tremendous games, but he, not only the scoring, but how efficient he was scoring. Just speak to what I mean, it, it, it was certainly a, um, you hate to say classic book, because that, that would mean you almost take it for granted. Um, but the way he scored tonight and against different defenses, you know, they were blitzing tonight and he started the game just getting off of it and we were knocking down shots. And then after that, it was just a snowball. Um, and <laughs> to be honest with you, I didn't even know he had 51. The coaches told me when we got in the back, I knew he scored a ton, but I didn't know it was 50. Um, so it, it certainly was a special night and to do it in 30 minutes, I think it was, um, yeah, he only played 30 minutes. So it's just one of those moments that you just sit and watch a guy get hot and then you see everybody feeding off of it. And it felt like every time you let it go, it was just going to fall into the basket. And then, you know, you don't even <laughs> notice DA had 30 when a guy has 51. Um, so I, I'm, I'm happy for him, happy for the um, – his family, the work that he puts in, um, you know, playing the right way, getting off of it, and ended up with 50 points is pretty cool. So it certainly was a good night for us. And then with just thinking back on what you said about Aiden, it's like, you know, this is, this is, you know how important Chris is with, with these two, you can see how dominant they can be as a, as a, as a tandem duo or whatever. I mean, well, I, I, I can't, you know, they would say the same thing. Like, everything we do is about the team. There, there were certain moments in the game where those two had it going, especially on the right side of the basket in the first half where we played a two-man game, and it was pretty cool to watch them, whether it was a DHO or he threw it to Book and Book came off of a pick-and-roll, shot it, or DA found him for a back door. Like, that was pretty cool to watch. Um, and, you know, I think all of these moments, opportunities are going to help us in the future. When you're able to do this without Chris, you know, it, it makes you think about the potential of our team as we go forward. Um, and I, I think they would say the same thing. Um, if not for the spacing on the backside, it doesn't open it up for those two to play the way that they, they did together tonight. I think uh, DeAndre just said in, in his post-game interview, just he was disappointed in himself a little bit with how the season started, but he's obviously turned it around a tremendous amount. What, what do you attribute? Is it, is it just mindset? I mean, what, what do you ah, attribute the way he's, he's kind of improved? I don't know. I, I think for me it's always about the consistent work, you know, whether you're going through a tough stretch, not getting off to the start you want to, you just keep working at it. Um, we have a, a phrase, reps removed out. You know, if you get the work in, you can trust the work, you know, and he's he's been working his tail off this year, um, whether it's in the weight room or extra work with MB. Um, I think over the long haul, the guys that work, you know, sooner or later, it, it's going to pay off for you. And, you know, he's certainly gotten himself into the kind of shape that it takes for a guy to put up these kinds of numbers. I think that's part of it, too. Um, probably a few other variables I'm missing. But I, I think when you put the work in, um, you run into nights like this or se or seasons or, or moments like this during the season. And I think that's something that he should be proud of but not satisfied with. How do you assess Landry's shooting night? He had that as good as shooting night since uh, Minnesota was the game that he last played before he I mean, I, I think it just takes guys time to get their legs. Um, he's had moments like this with us. Um, we're hopeful that he can sustain, you know, where he is playing in point five, shooting the ball when the opportunities are there, um, playing free, not deferring to anybody. I think that's when he's at his best. 51 is a crazy number of anyone you get there, but for him to have just six threes and five free throws with the amount he scored from hmm. he's always been a pretty old school player by trade. Can you speak on how complete of a score he is where it just feels like any single point on the floor? You just did. <laughs> I did. Yeah. No, I mean, I, look, he's 
there's not a level where he can't score and he can use both hands. Um, he can score with a hand in his face and he's willing to take the tough shots. Like that's the thing that people, I know they know it about him, but I, I talk about it all the time. He's a, he's a big shot maker, but he's also a big, big shot taker. And so when you have a post up game, when you can play in the mid range, when you can attack the basket and shoot it from, from three, it makes you hard to guard. And then I thought the most impressive thing was the way he started the game when they were blitzing him. He got off of it and, and we were able to make them pay. And then it just kind of snowballed from there because guys were knocking down shots. Then he started going and he was beating the blitz a few times and getting to the basket. One time he split it and got to the to the rack. And I think the work that he's put in, you can see his body is, is maturing and changing. He's able to take the hits around the basket and finish um, that's something that is going to pay off for us as we go forward. The ability to take those hits, finish, go to the free throw line, it allows us to set our defense. But th there's not a level or an area on the floor where he can't score the ball. Thank you. Uh, how'd, you, how'd you like the way that his last two plays the game were just making the right pass? I mean, it's, it's how we play. I mean, we... We, we have a mentality, we call it let it fly, but we also share the ball. I mean, that's, again, I think that he would say the same thing. Like, we, we if somebody's open, we, we'll take a great shot over a good shot. And I think that was his mentality. Coach, uh, you've had some wild ones here in the last four, whether it's stressful in Sacramento or mm -hmm. both in the Utah, and then, of course, the Lakers and Pistons out. What do you feel like this outside of Booker and Aiden led to the comfort and the wins? Um, it's hard to say. I mean, they, they missed some shots. We played pretty good defense in the first half. I mean, we held them to 18 points in the second. Like, when we have quarters like that and we score, it gives us a bit of a buffer. Um, same thing happened last game. In Sacramento, we held them to 20. That allowed us to create a bit of a, a buffer for us, and it gave us some confidence. When we do it at home, the crowd gets involved, and, you know, this becomes a tough place to play. Um, I think our guys are showing a level of resiliency in games. You know, no matter what happens, if we give up a 60-point half, they come out in the third, and they, their mentality is we got to D up. That's going to make the offense easier. The awareness of the game, I think, is something that's growing, uh, whether it's understanding what the officials are calling or understanding where the game is and what we need to do to come out with a win. Coach, I'm kind of curious. Since you've been here, this team has had like a very good winning pair of great team chemistry ball movement, those things. Do you make any comparison to those old Spurs team, Papa Dits teams back in the past that would have that winning pedigree that just went out of winning regular season? I mean, we, we'd love to be in that class. We're not there yet. Um, but that's, that's a program and a standard that we look at. Um, we want to create our own, but it's certainly one that inspires us. Um, you know, Golden State's won with that same mentality. Um, there's a number of programs that have done it that way, but we're not there yet. Um, we're, we're developing it. We have guys that have committed to it, but we have a ways to go. Uh, it's too early in the season. You know, 21 games. We do move the ball. We play unselfish basketball, but we also understand the defensive side of the ball. And I think that makes that offensive part that you talked about not easier, but somewhat more efficient. Um, but we have a ways to go before we can even be in that conversation with teams that have won four and five championships. Coach, uh, David Lee has also a fantastic start to the season, scoring 12 points tonight. He's starting the season shoot three from 341 to 83. How can you just attest just to how great of an acquisition you've been so far this season? You guys are, you always, Answer the questions, and you ask me the question. I mean, you just said. <laughs> um, I, I think the thing that's impressive about D. Lee, I think he could play with any team. I think when you come up the way that he did, you learn how to acclimate. Um, he's starting to figure out how how to play with us. Um, but I think when you can play efficiently in the Golden State program and and playing all those big games and being those crazy atmospheres, I think after that, everything else is normal to you. But he's also a guy that puts the work in. When we're in our coaches' meetings, he's one of the first guys on the floor every day. 
um, even on off days where we really don't want him to touch the floor, we're giving the guys a day off. He'll come out there and just shoot 20 free throws just to feel the ball. You know, guys like that respect the work, and you're not as surprised when you see them being productive on the floor. I think the thing that I'm, I'm impressed with is his, his ability to get to the paint and shoot the floater or get to the paint and find guys. I, I didn't know that he had that in his game. Thank you, Coach. All right, thank you.